up guys welcome back to life on the race hope you guys are doing well today we did a watch competition and we're gonna be talking about the results today um, this one we did on uh, watches that were for around or under five thousand US dollars this was a really fun thing to do over on our Instagram um, it really uh, was fun to engage with you guys and get a lot of the times you would message me um, between rounds and say like oh I can't believe uh, that this watch beat uh, this other watch it was really really fun so I'm gonna talk about the results and kind of go through my thoughts on like basically the outcome of, of this uh, competition. Like I said, the category was uh, best sports watch under or around 5,000 US dollars. Um, I will say that I probably made some mistakes in this one. Uh, it was the first one though, so um, uh, I got some really good feedback from you guys, so um, I'll change it the next time. Um, but it, it was fun. Nonetheless, it was really fun. And the outcome um, was, um, it wasn't really all that surprising, I think. Uh, most people would agree with, with the results, um, but there were some watches that I think were, were maybe some sleepers and people weren't expecting them to, to go so far. So um, let's just uh, dive straight into the results. Um, so I'll go over the bracket really quickly. Um, so the bracket, um, like I said, the topic was best sports watch for around or under 5,000 US dollars. The watch, the bracket, I'll put it up on the screen right now. Um, the first match was the Longines Heritage Skin Diver versus the Tudor North. Uh, flag automatic the Panerai uh, Lumina Marina went, went up against the Bell and Ross MA1 then the uh, Aqua Racer from Tag Heuer went against the Omega Seamaster Railmaster the Omega Railmaster the next matchup was the Zodiac Sea Wolf 68 versus the Oris Aquas then we had the matchup of the Tudors the Tudor Pelagos went up against the Tudor Black Bay then the IWC Pilots um, Mark uh, I believe that is uh, 18 went up against the Omega Seamaster 300. The Longines Heritage Legend Diver went up against the Rolex Air King. And then the last matchup was the Brigue Super Marina versus the Brightling Super Ocean 2. So, in our first matchup, um, this one I was surprised about. Um, the Longines Skin Diver actually ended up beating the Tudor North, North, um, North Flag. Uh, this was a big matchup for me, in my opinion. Like, I was not expecting this Longines to really um, win this matchup, but you can see almost 70% of people voted for this Longines. I think Longines is a beautiful place to, 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 to look if you're looking at buying watches, and I think this Longines really, really held its own. Um, the reason why I thought it was weird that it beat the, the Tudor North Flag was just because so many people love the Tudor, and um, you hear a lot, a lot more about Tudor than you do Longines, I think, within the watch world. And, but I'm glad that it got, uh, the Longines got its kind of time. Um, then we've got, the next matchup was the Panerai versus the Bell and Ross. This one I think was um, kind of almost unanimous, 80 almost 80% voted for the, the uh, Panerai. I didn't really think I had that many Paneristis uh, in the in in my uh, Instagram followers, but uh, clearly I did. The Bell and Ross, um, while it's a, it's a phenomenal watch, I think people just um, don't really, that's not the brand that people are going to go to immediately um, to uh, to think about buying a watch. Um, the next matchup was the Railmaster versus the Aqua Racer. This was, in fa the uh, Railmaster ended up winning 66% to 34%. I was sad about this, because I actually think the Aqua Racer presents really some really great value but it is the Omega Railmaster. People love this model from Omega. So is it surprising? Not really. Um, I think it's just a, a cool matchup. Um, the next one was the uh, Seawolf versus the Aquas. Um, the Aquas one, I will say the Seawolf, the, the way the case kind of is shaped uh, is reminiscent of the 70s. Um, and it's probably not everyone's uh, taste, the, the shape of the case, which is understandable. And I also think that the Oris Aquas, many people love this watch, especially if you're just getting to dive or sports watches. This is something that a lot of people um, kind of lean, lean towards. And then it was the Tudor matchup. And interestingly enough, the Black Bay beat the Pelagos. I was surprised this, well, surprised. I, I voted for the Pelagos in this. I actually think it presents some really great value. It's a modern rendition of this of this style of watch. I think the the titanium case is really cool. And it almost makes me think of like the modern version of a dive watch from Tudor. Um, but the Black Bay ended up winning with 66%, which was, if, if I really think about it, it's not very surprising. Um, the Black Bay is obviously loved by, by many. 
Um, moving on, we've got the um, Seamaster versus the IWC. And the IWC snuck by, snuck by by 4%, 52% for the IWC, 48% for the Omega Seamaster. Um, I, I was, well, surprised. I think IWC is a brand that is, um, I don't wanna say underappreciated, but it's not talked about as often as Omega or Rolex is. Um, and I was really happy to see this one go through. I was sad that the Omega Seamaster didn't go through though. Um, because I think it would have um, given some of the other watches a run for their money, especially because this is another dive watch that people kind of go to as um, as what they want to uh, buy as like a you know their next purchase or something like that. As we continue on, we've got the another Longines, the Longines Legend Diver, the one with the two crowns, and that went up against the Rolex Air King. I will say already, like I got comments about this um, on my announcement of the competition, but Rolex Air King probably isn't wasn't the best thing to include in this this competition. I put my hands up and I say I probably made a mistake. You can find these on the second hand market for around six thousand US dollars, um, but uh, you know it's definitely much more expensive than some of the watches that are that are in this competition. So uh, I put my hands up. I made a mistake, um, and. Uh, I'll be sure to change it in the past, but or in the future. But the Rolex Air King did win this this um, matchup, 62% to 38%. I still think the Longines put up a good fight, especially against a brand like Rolex. That a lot of people just say it's Rolex. I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna go for it. Um, so I think the Longines really did well um, in this in this arena and for this round. And then the last one was the uh, Bremont, uh, uh, Bremont uh, Supermarine versus the Breitling Super Ocean. This was a really close matchup. Actually, right up until um, probably the last couple of hours, this was a dead like this was dead at 50-50 between these two. But the uh, Prémont ended up um, sneaking by with 53%. I really think uh, Prémont presents some really great value um, for watches as well. It's not as well known as some of the other um, some of the other watch brands that I've featured in this um, in this competition. But at the same time, like. It's something that you should really look out for because I think they do present a lot of value, good value. Um, and we'll keep going through here. I'm just clicking through my story so I can um, just get to where we want to go here. So, around two, we had the Longines Skin Diver face up against the Panerai Luminar. Luminar. And the Longines snuck by 60% to 40%. Again, like this is, I think, uh, I think this competition really showed me I should continue to talk about Longines. I have talked about it in the past, and I think they do really present a lot of great value. But this thing snuck by um, at 60% of the six, taking 60% of the vote. Um, I think the um, I personally think the kind of classic, kind of aged look of this watch is what really made it stand out in this competition. And I think that nostalgia is why people kind of like it. Um, I personally would put this on a leather strap. I probably wouldn't keep it on that, uh, on the uh, on the mesh, uh, but that's just me. I've never really been a fan of Panerai. It's just because it doesn't really fit my wrist. My wrists are a lot smaller and these watches are a lot bigger, but I, I do appreciate them uh, for, for what they are. So the long jeans snuck by there. The next matchup was the Omega Railmaster versus the Oris Aquas. This is for round two. And um, it's not really a, I, I think this was a pretty obvious win for the Omega Railmaster. While the Oris Aquas presents a lot of great value, if you had the choice between the two, I think the Railmaster would, uh, would, uh, would, would be the winner. Um, and that's obviously what the results are showing. Next uh, matchup for round two was the Tudor Black Bay versus the IWC. And the Tudor Black Bay uh, went through with 57% uh, of the vote. Um, again, I think this is the, the Tudor has really shown over the last 10, 15, 20 years that it is uh, ready. It, it's uh, really great value. It can compete with a lot of the other brands, and you can get a lot out of this, especially if you're getting the, the Black Bay with the in-house movement. Like you're basically ticking many, many boxes um, that watch collectors are looking for. If you are looking for something that is made in-house, if that's something that's really important to you, Tudor does it. If you're looking for a dive watch that's very similar to the, Submar the Rolex Submariner, but has its own flair to it, so this Black Bay really has it, um, and it's it, it's incredible quality. So. 
the next one, I think this was the last one. This was the Rolex Air King versus the Premo uh, Super Arena. Um, and the Air King, Air King won this. I think this was, I think, if I'm completely honest, I think this probably has more to do with the fact that, that people know Rolex versus um, Playmo and um, and they probably just voted for what they know. Um, I personally would go for the, the Premo, that's what I voted for in this round. Yes, I did participate, um, but that's that's what it is. I, you know, Rolex um, has a lot of uh, has a lot of uh, power when it comes to uh, um, name recognition. And so the semifinals, our first semifinal was the Longines Skin Diver versus the Omega Railmaster. This was a really interesting matchup because I think both of these watches have that vintage feel to it. Um, but I will say they probably wear very, very different differently. If you look at these watches, you see uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, they both have those. I think the Longines is a little bit bigger than the Railmaster, and I think that might have to do with why the Railmaster ended up winning with 62% of the vote. Um, I think the nostalgia of that Railmaster, of the Railmaster, the vintage Railmasters is, is another thing that kind of helped out here. Um, but still, it, it, this, like, it, if you look at the semifinal, these, like, if you have to lay out the best watches of this competition, I think this semifinal actually did a very, very good job of, of picking those. Um, I personally voted for the Longines because I really, really love Longines, but the Railmaster, um, deservedly so, uh, went through here. And then the other semi-final was the Rolex Air King versus the Tudor Black Bay. Um, I, <laughs> selfishly, I was like, I really hope the Tudor Black Bay wins this one um, because I think I did make a mistake in including the Rolex Air King here. Um, and um, what was great to see is that um, people would actually, the people who voted, 64% uh, of them went, wanted the Tudor Black Bay out of this matchup. Um, I think this again shows that, yes, Rolex is a great name and it has a lot of um, heritage to make really beautiful watches, but at the same time, if you have a choice between two watches, um, people think a little bit more deeply into uh, why they're actually buying that Rolex. Um, I thought it was going to be a clean sweep, I thought the Rolex was going to go all the, all the way, but the Tudor ended up winning, and I think um, maybe it was someone looking down on us and saying, hey, maybe the Rolex shouldn't be in this and we'll, we'll help you out. <laughs> So, the final of this competition uh, ended up being the Omega Railmaster versus the uh, Tudor Black Bay. And um, I think these are, this was a, a really great final in my opinion. I think this really, um, this final really took the uh, creme de la creme, the two best watches of this, of this competition and put them in the final. Um, the Omega Railmaster obviously is a it's a re-edition that was released very recently by Omega to uh, pay homage to the Railmaster, the vintage Railmasters, the Railmasters that were made previously by Omega. Um, the vintage Railmasters are extremely difficult to find. Um, they are not very common, and you really have to search to find ones in really great condition. Um, this watch obviously um, has the um, vintage aesthetic with it with these like almost like aged uh hour markers as well as um like the aged looking loom on the on the uh, hours and minutes hand and this kind of like almost like dark gray dial um it's a really beautiful watch and to be honest if you look at this watch and you look at the tudor black bay i don't think you can really go wrong if you ended up buying either of them um, so we had on one side the Railmaster, the other side the Tudor Black Bay. This has been really an icon within the watch world within the last couple of years. And the Black Bay obviously um, takes, into, uh, takes um, its inspiration from the um, Tudor Submariners that were, uh, were produced. Um, it has, you know, obviously the one that I featured here, they have a couple different colors, but the one I featured has this black uh, bezel, this kind of dark brownish dial, and these um, Again, they've got that like kind of vintage uh, yellow um, kind of mustard coloring, not mustard, that, that's definitely not mustard, um, kind of like a, a cream uh, coloring to the, to the hands and to the hour markers. Uh, and again, it really t uh, pulls on the, uh, on the um, kind of vintage feel that uh, many collectors are really looking for. And so, um, 
the winner of this of this competition was the Tudor Black Bay with 55% of the vote. This vote was very close um, throughout the entire time. I was monitoring it, and we were ba they were basically neck and neck. Initially, the Tudor, the Railmaster kind of took off and had the majority of the vote. Then the, it swung over to the Black Bay, and then it remained quite um, quite even at around 50%. And I literally went to sleep and I said, well, we'll figure out what, who ends up winning this uh, in the morning. And I woke up and I found that the Tudor Black Bay ended up winning. Uh, I personally do do think that it was um, fairly well deserved. Uh, the, the Tudor Black Bay obviously presents a lot of value if you are looking for a Submariner inspired uh, watch. Um, and I think it was a deserved winner for this first uh, tournament that we uh, ended up hosting on our Instagram. So this was really, really fun. Let me know in the comment section below who you had to win from the beginning. I would love to, to hear it. Thank you so much for participating as well. It was really fun and I hope to do many more of these in the future. If you do have a category or some type of topic that you want me to do a competition around, be sure to put it in the comment section because I want to do these um, more regularly. So um, stay tuned for that. I'll make sure I'll do announcement videos before I end up hosting them. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought about it. Um, if you haven't already, I didn't say that at the beginning of the video this time, but be sure to smash that like button for us. It really does help us out. Um, it helps this video get into the YouTube algorithm, which is always really helpful. And also subscribe to the channel if you like these types of videos. And with this said, guys, thank you so much for watching and until next time.